Hey everyone, so recently I acquired RX 9070 XT and since it took me a while to get this card from release time, by the time I got it, I was able to throw it in my system and it worked on Linux right away. Now one thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a comparison between a few games between Windows 11 and Fedora 42. Fedora 42 is what I run on my main system and I dual boot into Windows 11 sometimes when I need to. What I went ahead and did here was go to Steam database. I sorted the top played games by the 24 hour peaks. And I looked through the top 30 and picked a few that I have here on hand. Uh, the ones I went ahead with was Counter-Strike 2, Dota 2, Peak, Dead by Daylight, and Warframe. These games all have a lot of players at a 24 hour peak throughout the day on Steam. And I thought I'd go ahead and highlight these games here so I could demonstrate some of the performance on this card. A few of the games I have have uh, benchmark tools in them but the rest don't. And for those, we just have the FPS counter on screen where we can just look at the performance ourselves and see which one is performing better or not. And what we really want to see is on par performance, because if you know one's doing worse than the other, it really doesn't matter here. What we want to see is parity. This way we know that if anyone is looking into getting into Linux, they'll know that the game they want to play works just as good as it does on Windows. It's also a reassurance knowing that we're not losing performance by switching, but let's go ahead and head into the benchmarks. So the first game we have is CS2, and these are the settings here. Basically, everything is low except for 2x MSAA, dynamic shadows on all, and an isotropic filtering at 16x. We also turned off any resolution scaling. And what you see on the screen, I went ahead and put the averages. It shows that on Windows, we had a slightly higher average of 474 compared to Fedora's 462, but the 1% low shows a difference here too. We have 192.4 on Windows, and we have 216.8 on Fedora. The 1% lows represents the lowest our frame rate will hit. At on screen, you can see that I have Mango HUD enabled on Fedora. Fortunately, with Windows, I couldn't get MSI Afterburner to read on the screen, and it wouldn't record AMD software either. For the most part, while looking at the game, you can see that this thing maintains over 300 FPS, which is really good if you have a 240 hertz monitor. Next, we move on to Marvel Rivals. To avoid any bottlenecks here, I maxed out every setting. And we went with Epic's TSR just because on Windows, we have access to FSR 4. On Linux, out of the box, we don't have access to FSR 4. Now I can mod it in there, but that's not the out of the box experience that one would experience themselves. It looks like on Windows, we have 91 average frame rate with a 71% low. And on Fedora, we have a 89% average frame rate with a 68 1% low. This is the new benchmark feature inside of Marvel Rivals. So it basically gives us the worst case scenario out of the box. So while you may see higher frames in your matches, this is giving us the if everyone's doing everything at once kind of scenario. And this is pretty much a quick benchmark. I think it's about a minute and a half or so close to two minutes. And like I said, we max this out so that we do not get any bottlenecks here because my CPU will bottleneck this card at lower settings.
Next up, we have Dota 2. And the same goes here. Bumped up the graphics so that we can have more of the processing power happening on the graphics card. Uh, what we can see here is seems to be performing better on Linux. And we have the Vulkan renderer on Linux. It's the only renderer available. And on Windows, we have DX11. It also had Vulkan, but I didn't test that. So it may not be a one to one here. I also didn't get the averages and lows here. So we're just going to have to eye this out. And as you can see, the performance is seems to be on Linux side here. But still just don't quite have the damage. And now Tofu, he steps up. That may not be the place that he wants to be. Kataomi is also coming through. Maladich is here with a two man decay. Brain sap Tofu. He has a Lotus, but he's going to die here for first blood. Ooh, didn't get that Lotus off. Maybe it could have made the difference, yeah. First blood for Katomi. He got a good sleep. Save. Ready with the lift. Telekinesis, they go to the tombstone. But Queen, he's going to die, and they'll take out the trade on the save. It's a level 3 Shadow Strike. It's a lot of slow and damage. They will kill the tombstone. Extra 1.5 for GPK. Thinking about maybe jumping in, but knowing that. Tofu's gonna be here as well. They're not gonna commit. Even up a couple of kills. First blood went the way of Bane. Who picks up boots. So gonna be moving a bit quicker. Also getting a blood grenade and a smoke. Maybe expecting another move from Kethomi. GPK, this is how he gets started. All of a sudden he gets a kill over mid. He's got some help. Next, we have Warframe. And I put everything here on the highest setting, except for anything that says ludicrous. If it's ludicrous, it's not on. Everything is on the highest setting here. And we went ahead and entered a execution mission in Mars. Same mission, but the world varies because it is procedurally generated. So I try to keep it as one to one as possible. And on here, I think it's very hard to tell which one here takes the lead. They both seem to be performing on par, which is what we want to see. We don't want to see one underperforming the other heavily. This gives us a good indication that this is almost a one to one gaming experience on both operating systems. It does seem to me that the Linux side seems to hit 400 more often, though. There's a heavy unit approaching. Here we have peak. The highest settings, 1440p. This one was also uh, not easy to benchmark, so I just basically started up on the same route on uh, both of these here. On both of these, I actually went DX12 just to keep it consistent. As you can see, we have VKD3D on the right side with Fedora. And that is the DirectX 12 translation. Solid gaming experience here. If you have a 240 hertz monitor, lower some settings, you'll be hitting 240 hertz the whole time. As you guys may have noticed, all of these games that I've tested so far have been multiplayer games.
All right, here we have Dead by Daylight, Ultra Settings, 120 FPS limit, which is the upper limit of the game. And as you can see within the game, it seems like the minimum is 119 on both sides, and it stays at that 120 often. Couldn't get the same map on this one. We have at least two different experiences here, and we can see that the performance is pretty consistent on both sides. So I would have no problem playing this on both. So I went ahead and chose these games as they are some of the most played games on Steam. I could sit here and benchmark all of these single player AAA games, but I wanted to showcase something that people are actually playing on a daily. Like I mentioned before, these games were in the top 30 of Steam's 24 hour peak of players. So hopefully I'm showcasing a game here that you play because these games seem to be of the most popular. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe for more. Let me know down below which games you want to see, and I may consider it for a follow-up video. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.